everyone, and welcome to this episode of Pathways to Perform. We hope these real stories from real people resonate to help guide you on your path to perform at your very best in any field. Joining me today is a young superstar. I am so excited. His talent knows no boundaries at all. In the performing arts industry, he would be defined as something that we call a triple threat. But most impressive to me, as talented as he is, he has a heart of gold. I love him so very much. He is currently guest starring in a little TV series that you might have heard of. It's called Disney's High School Musical, The Musical, The Series. It is amazing. I'm a huge fan of it. Tim Federley is brilliant. The entire cast is brilliant. The show is fantastic. Please watch and let's welcome the amazing and awesome Joey Serafini. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm so <laughs> excited to see you. I'm, ha- I'm so happy to see you too. It's so funny you still call me Joey Serafini because. You know, it's Joe Serafini now, but I everyone in Pittsburgh still calls me Joey. <laughs> I don't think it's ever going to go away. You'll be 45 and we'll be like, come here, Joey. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind it at all. I love Joey. <laughs> well, and it's just how we, how much we love you. It's who you mm. are and it's it still embraces everything, the love mm. that you give. So that's all that is about. That's so nice. Thank how you. How you doing? You good? Yeah. Just where are you, we where are, are you at right now? We are in Salt Lake City, um, still filming season two of the show, um, and hopefully we'll be done pretty soon, and then I'll be going to LA. Are you excited? Oh, yeah. It feels like life is officially beginning um, post-graduation, because this has kind of been where I've been living while we film, and then, but like officially where I'm going to be planting is LA, so... That's okay, great. Exciting. Well, that's so exciting. I yeah. mean, so I have so many questions for you. I think that your story is really, truly inspiring. I mean, you started performing at such a young age. I have these visions, and I know your family, but I have these visions of <laughs> the Von Traps, you know, running around and singing. When did your parents realize that, you know, maybe we should get this kid some formal training? <laughs> well, I think all of us, I, there's, I have three siblings, three older siblings, I'm the youngest. And I think all of us had musical talent and ha- like we enjoyed it a lot. I think we all grew up watching my dad sing in church and my mom was also a little dancer. And um, so we all were musical. And so I watched all of them go to CLO before I ever stepped foot. Um, and then I think watching them, I was inspired and, you know, I was always singing and dancing around the house, um, specifically to Wicked. (laughs) I remember dancing to Dancing Through Life on a coffee table (laughs) that we were about to throw out. Um, All my own choreography, of course. course. And um, (laughs) then um, I think they just realized I had a super big interest in it. And I started CeeLo Summer Camps at five and then formally training at seven um and that's whenever it all started i love that okay so (laughs) you know i i look back at your time at the academy and i mean i certainly had the pleasure of working with you on on several projects and so grateful for that opportunity and watching me too evolve we had fun it was just (laughs) fun and so you know I look back at some of the roles that you got to play. I mean, you got to play one of the most coveted roles in the organization. You got to play Tiny Tim and you got to hit the main stage and do some shows. (laughs) Was there ever a moment in which you realized that maybe performing arts was a calling for you, that this wasn't just something for fun, but it might be your your purpose in life? Um, I think at that age, like at seven, eight, nine, 10, um, it really was just fun for me and I was just having a blast and it was also kind of so natural to me. I just, I felt very natural being on stage and performing for people. Um, and I also had a lot of older people telling me all the time, it's really hard to actually have a career in it though. And, um, so I was kind of discouraged in a way. And then in high school, I think once I had just been doing it forever, I was like, well, I can't really see myself going after anything else and this is what I'm I feel like I'm the best at so 
why, why wouldn't I try it? And why wouldn't I at least see what it means for me? Because people do it. So yeah, I think in high school is when I actually felt the calling, but um, up until then I kind of was just having fun. (laughs) No, I, I think that's great. So, you know, you're, you're in high school and you're having that realization, that epiphany that, you know what, I do love this. I am going to go get it. Did you get nervous or stressed about that? I mean, there's a whole audition process. There's a whole identifying a university. Uh, So uh, what was that process like? Once you have that, I'm going to do it. I'm going to chase my dream. Mm -hmm. What did you go through? Yeah. I mean, it's like I said, it was definitely nerve wracking and you know everyone tells you how hard it is um but I had a lot of really amazing people guiding me like you um like Patty Maloney I had um, my voice teacher Kim Steinhauer like everyone was really helping me prepare the best that I could to make it go as smoothly as possible now but that also was on me a little bit to be organized and have all my crap together. I had a whole spreadsheet of each college that I was interested in, what they required, um, what monologues I was going to do for each and how much, how long the monologues needed to be, you know, every little detail I had mapped out. So I knew exactly what I needed to prepare for each audition and so on and so forth. And that was definitely helpful. Um, But no, yeah, it's definitely a, a grueling process, but I think as long as you just put your heart and soul into it, it can work out. Great. <laughs> so your training at the Academy, I mean, did it prepare you for the auditions? And I'm, I'm really interested in the development from such a young age all the way through your high school years. You know, a lot of people tell us that not only did they gain technical training, but also life skills. So how did the Academy help you develop, you know, basic things from confidence to like hitting the high note, the money, note, right? <laughs> yes. So it's that kind of like personal and professional development. How, how did your training help you arrive to that place? Um, I, I, I mean, it all just kind of goes together. Like it's hard to look back on that time because it all was just happening so fast and you, when you're growing up, you don't even realize you're growing up. (laughs) Um, But no, I mean, every audition technique class, every dance class, even just learning the discipline of how to behave in a rehearsal room was so important to just my professional development, I guess you could say. Um, Because once I got into college and you're with other students that really haven't had as much experience or a place like CLO to grow in those professional developmental ways, um, you see not everyone has had the advantages that you have had to really learn all those life skills and performance skills the way that CLO was able to prepare me. Um, so I was favorite, super grateful. <laughs> your favorite memories. Do you have any defining moments from the Academy or your time as a young actor before you kind of, oh. uh, you know, evolved into your college career? Were there? Oh, some of those totally. Yeah. Tell me um, <laughs> I mean, every, every show that I did was so magical and just working with actual professional actors and seeing them doing the thing that I could be doing in my future was so cool especially people that I looked up to so much or had seen on Broadway before. That was amazing. Um, But at at CELO Academy, I mean, really it was, it was building those friendships and that those bonds of performing together and growing together, really. Um, Mini stars was so much fun, but the most fond memories I think are like musical theater production when we would put on a show Um, those were just always so much fun. And the whole process was just a blast. And you learn so much about how you prepare and how you get ready for a performance. I don't know. I don't know. It's just so much that you're learning without realizing you're learning it. That makes sense. (laughs) For me, it makes sense though, because you're just in the middle of it and you're not really thinking ahead. You're just living in the moment and doing the thing, learning the steps, learning the song. I, uh, one of my favorite moments watching you was definitely catch me if you can. Mm. I mean, I remember that show and and the energy, your group, the dynamic, the chemistry, the connection, the relationships, the family, 
your mm -hmm. that group was incredible. And I remember watching you because at that moment you didn't realize, you know, you didn't have that coming to that this is what I'm gonna do. But mm -hmm. I remember watching you and I was like, there's no way he's doing anything else. <laughs> <laughs> This is what you're supposed to do. Oh. It was, your performance was it was it was just impressive and unbelievable and captivating. You have a magnetic energy and infectious energy, and uh, it goes down Thank as you. one of my favorite productions. I me too. I think that was like my number one CLO Academy show for sure. So and great. also, it was almost a way that I proved to myself I could do it because we put it together in like what three weeks a day <laughs> and <laughs> and I I don't I think Frank Abagnale Jr. leaves the stage maybe three times like, like it's the whole show was me and to actually prove to myself that I could do it and keep up and keep up with the choreography you know everything was super good for my confidence going into those college auditions that were coming up so fast well and the bond that you have with the, that that particular group i mean when you came back to the academy to visit with us and to teach that master class for the, yeah. young, the youngers you know those young kids <laughs> that are looking at you and and admiring you uh, you know you, you've always given back but i think what was really cool was to see everyone come back to see you as well so your group mm. came back and you guys have a very special dynamic and oh yeah and we still all stay in touch it's really special it's a it's a it's a special group and uh you know after that you kind of all went different ways and different universities different colleges some down you know went down different paths completely mm -hmm. and so you know you hit michigan and what what was the biggest surprise for you there you're headed into one of the top musical theater programs in the world what was most surprising to you as prepared as you were what mm -hmm. was the biggest kind of surprise that you faced um honestly figuring out what i do and what i bring to the table in the grander scheme of the world of musical theater because you know in pittsburgh i was a bit of a bigger fish in a small pond and going to michigan you know you find everyone is just as talented or more talented than you. And you have to figure out what is it that I can do that's going to make me stand out or that's going to, you know, serve me in my education and in my, you know, career. Um, so it was hard because I'm a pianist as well as you know. Um, and because not everyone can be a pianist, they would often come to me to play stuff for voice lessons or music direct shows that were being put on by student run companies. And it was, I had a little bit of a, an identity crisis of like, am I supposed to be a music director? Am I supposed to be in the pit? Like, cause I can do that, but like, it's not really what I'm here for. Um, and then eventually I kind of just had to tell myself, no, you can actually say no to those things <laughs> and you can, um, you can do whatever you want to do. Um, and around that time that I was, you know, coming to those realizations of, I can be in charge of my own path. Um, that's whenever everything kind of started to change. And then that junior year was when I booked high school musical. So it was kind of wild. Yeah, it, it's definitely a wild ride. The industry is a wild ride and, and life, right? You never know. <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's really just about being prepared. It is about preparation and being ready for whatever it is, but you can do both. And especially nowadays, I don't know that there's really, I'm just an actor. I, right. I think that being multifaceted is so important and embracing everything you do is so vital to your happiness you know absolutely and I do enjoy piano that's not to say that right. I didn't enjoy those experiences but um you know I just wanted to figure out exactly what I wanted to focus on at each time you know yeah, I don't know <laughs> you have to go through that process wait I can do this wait I can do this and then one day you wake up and go wait I can do everything which is fun. yes <laughs> thing. it's just part of that journey it's it's life journey that's all that is mm -hmm. That makes me happy. So we're, you know, uh, your time at Michigan, I'm sure was very, very special. I know it's a fantastic program with such a great oh, reputation. Yeah. 
what were some of your favorite moments there? I mean, I know that you were in several shows and was there a specific role or a specific show that, that holds a special place in your heart? Um, yeah, you know, I never got cast in any like roles at Michigan, or at least in the university productions, but, um, I, I have this great memory of, we were doing sweet charity and I was cast as a dancer and I had never really been a dancer in a show. Well, I had been a dancer in the show the previous year, but you know, to do Fosse and sweet charity, you're like, Oh, I can be a dancer. And <laughs> you know, this makes me so happy. <laughs> um, so I just remember when I, af- the day after I got cast, I was in, I must've been like dance styles class the next day. And I just remember like really feeling myself and giving it my all in class. And I was like, I'm a dancer. <laughs> and I just, I think that was such a good memory of um, just as soon as you get some, t- some sort of validation, then like, you can believe in yourself and, and deliver, but also it could have just been there all the whole time of just, Oh yeah, I can dance. I can be a dancer. I can be, I can do Fosse dancing in this sweet charity for sure. And that was, that was a good moment of believing in myself and just doing it, you know? Sure. Validation. I think it's so important to look at that and say, I can do this too. And it just, it builds your confidence. When you start kind of doing other things, your confidence ultimately grows, which is so Mm -hmm. important. So very important. Oh yeah. I would like to circle back for a minute because I think it's important that we recognize that you didn't get a lead role in a Mm -mm. university production because I feel like so many people, young college performers put a lot of weight into getting cast or getting that role. Oh yeah everything can still happen for you. It's just another audition. Mm -hmm. And so what were some of your experiences with that? I mean, you had to feel a lot of ups and downs because this industry alone is peaks and valleys. Oh yeah. But can you share a little bit about that journey? Yeah. Um, Well, in college, it's hard because we're all the same age group. So when you're doing all these musicals with um, adults in them and I also look like a high schooler (laughs) with a bunch of students that can also look like adults or they're way taller or more, you know, dashing and like they can be a leading man and I'm short and I am shorter than most of the women that could be playing the lead, you know, all that goes into play. So it was just realizing like, oh, well, this isn't like, I just don't fit in any roles for the shows that we're doing. Um, but I can still be in them and, you know, be a featured dancer or a featured character. I don't know. Um, But yeah, yeah, definitely. It was hard though. I mean, (laughs) because I had come from doing roles my whole life. Um, But I never actually took it too harshly though. I was always like, well, it's just not right now. Um, And I always believed that there would be something in the future you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the simple fact that you can step back and just celebrate the fact that you got cast and be okay with that and walk through that kind of journey to get to the next place because an audition is an audition. You never know. Absolutely. And also I felt like, you know, everyone needs something different out of this experience and maybe the faculty doesn't think that I need uh, to be playing a role right now. They need, they, I need that ensemble training. I need to have that experience of being in the ensemble and supporting the bigger show. Well, it worked out for you because watching <laughs> the series, I mean, I was watching it and I, you, you're dancing and killing it. And I was so <laughs> proud. I was like, look, let's go. Thank you. <laughs> no, I, I do. I do believe that everything happens for a reason. And those kind of moments helped create everything that you're capable of doing now. And now you're doing it with more confidence. And maybe that wouldn't have happened if that opportunity didn't present itself at university. So. Oh, totally. 100%. That's a, that's great. Uh, you did mention that you landed this role your junior year so how did this come about how did you learn about the audition how did this all surface so actually this goes back to CLO in Pittsburgh so I'll try to make this as condensed as possible Um, but 
I think the story is important because it, it, it does really connect dots in so many ways. For sure. Um, so as many stars, we would perform in the opening number of the Gene Kelly Awards, which, yeah, um, Gene Kelly Awards, for those listening that don't know, I guess, high school musical theater awards, regional that lead to the Jimmies. My school never participated, but I was in the opening number because I was with CLO. And at intermission, and this was probably my sophomore year of high school or somewhere in high school. And at intermission, you know, once we do the number, we go out and watch the rest of the ceremony. And I was introduced to Tim Federley, who was being honored with a some type of distinguished alumni, alumni award. award. Yes, yeah. Distinguished alumni award. Absolutely. And, you know, I knew who he was because actually now this goes even back further. My brother and sister, I don't know if you know the story. They were in music man with him at CLO, like in the summer season, okay, my brother was I Winthrop. Know this. Oh. <laughs> My bro- and I was a like a babe. I w- I must have been like six years old, and um, I had no clue. Okay, I love yes. yes, in the Follow summer they were. <laughs> Jim Federley was um Tommy Gilles. My sister was Gracie Shin, and of course we saw the show so many times, and I was obsessed. Um, and Jeff Goldblum was Harold Hill. It was a pretty star-studded production. Um, <laughs> it was very fun. So anyway the archives that's happening oh yeah there's some good pictures um and uh so I knew who he was and I was you know of course honored to meet him because he had then by that point written these books better Nate than ever series and um I don't know at that time what else was out but super excited to meet him and um Olivia Owen who was one of my teachers at CELO Academy introduced me to him and uh he pointed out he was like oh you were in the opening number in the pink shirt or whatever shirt I was wearing. And I was like, Oh yeah, I was, I mean, it was a group number. I I wasn't, didn't have like a solo or anything. And he was like, Oh no, you totally stood out to me. Um, Like you just had a a spark. And I was like, Oh, thanks. And okay. Um, (laughs) So after that, (laughs) cause I don't know. I was just like, Oh, that was very nice. Um, And then after that, we kind of just stayed in touch on social media and, you know, followed each other. Um, and then junior year of college, I get a DM request from casting, uh, that was casting the show. And they asked me to originally tape for EJ. So I did that in October, I think never heard anything kind of forgot about it. Four months later in February, I, um, got a self tape request for Seb and, Less than a week later, I was flying to Salt Lake City for my first day of filming. That is incredible. (laughs) I knew a little bit about it and I knew that the DM happened, but I didn't realize that you had the turnaround was that quick. Yeah, it was very quick. Filming, here we go. (laughs) And also, I had only ever worked on a film set that was smaller scale in Pittsburgh for a pilot that I did, but. I had really was, did not really realize what I was getting myself into, or at least the grandness of it. Oh, I'm sure. That was a learning curve for you. Totally. Yeah. And so, you know, you get there. What was, what was that process? Like, where, where did you start? Did someone hand you a script? Was it, did you meet <laughs> the cast? Like, how did this all happen? Cause it happened online. And then all of a sudden you're flying to meet everybody. Yes. Um, So I think I read the script for the first time on the plane there. Um, And I didn't have any lines in the first episode. I was, I was just seen. Um, So that actually was great because I could sit back and kind of watch what the others were doing and see how they were doing their job and kind of, you know, plan for whenever I had to do something like that, know what I was going to do because I had been watching and learning. Um, but yeah, I got there, went straight into a wardrobe fitting. Then I went into the hair and makeup trailer and they kind of looked at my face and decided what they were going to do. And, um, after that people were coming back from filming and I just sort of met people as they were arriving back to base camp and it was all, everyone was so nice and so kind. 
And then the next day, I think, was my first day of actual filming and everyone was there and very nice. And yeah, it just started, like I said, watching and learning and getting into the groove of what a day feels like on set. How did you ground yourself? Did you just kind of put yourself in the zone and just focus and allow your training to kind of take over? Because you, you were prepared. Right. That's, I would say yes. Yeah. I kind of was just like, okay, we're doing this and it's going to go the way it's going to go. And I'm just going to be as professional as I can be, do what they tell me to do. Um, and hopefully that's good enough. Cause then they just, they just say, all right, rolling. And you're like, okay, I guess we're doing this. We're doing this and thing. then, <laughs> and then they say cut and no one comes over and applauds you or anything. They're just like, all right, moving on. And you're like, well, I hope what I did was good enough. I hope it all went well. And that's still something that I deal with. I think because we come from theater mm -hmm. where you at the end of the show get to thank the audience for coming and everyone applauds and says, you did a good job. Um, in film, you kind of just do the job and move on. <laughs> and then you, you no don't. idea. There's no instant response. Correct. And, and then you don't also get to share that experience and that performance with anyone until months later down the road whenever it finally airs so then by that point you kind of forget how it even felt um <laughs> and it's just it's just a completely different beast um so that was definitely a learning curve as well as figuring out i hope i did a good job and then just actually being like okay i know i did my homework i know i can do this job i'm here for a reason i can do this that's right that's where you trust and you know that you're ready. That's that preparation we talked about. That's you have to trust yes. that. I think it's important. People forget that you, you know, you've got this. Yes. <laughs> and you just have to do the <laughs> thing. Like you said, they say action and rolling. You got to go. You, you got to do the thing. So that yep. that's fair. makes me happy too. <laughs> I, I mean, when I'm watching the show and, and I have watched it and I'm not kidding, I think it's fantastic. The writing is, I laugh out loud. And, <laughs> Jake, my son, of course, you know, Jake, um, of course, he says, hi, hi, <laughs> so proud. everyone's so proud. Uh, <laughs> he was walking through and he said, this is really good. And, I, and you can see the joy from the, from the crew, the set, everyone is there just like exactly what you said, having a blast. You're having fun. Mm -hmm. Are there any great moments for you so far? Any great memories that you're just, that Want to, of course, they want to keep you going. That, that's what keeps you going and energized about a project. But any like defining moments or great memories so far? I think the best memories honestly come from when we're shooting musical numbers on the show. Because, I mean, you know, maybe it's because I'm a musical theater boy and that's my bread and butter. But um, they're just so much fun. And you just get to like sing and dance all day long because they have to get every angle and you're doing the number over and over again, but it's just fun. And you're with all these wonderful, talented, grounded individuals. There's like, it, it's just a blast. Um, and, the, and those are the days that also we're most, if it's a big group number, we're all together. Other times, you know, if, it's not a group scene. You don't get to see the rest of the cast that much if they're filming scenes that you're not in. Um, so it's just fun to have those big days where we're all together and doing the same thing together. It's just a blast. What do you love the most about playing Seb? Such a great character. So, much, <laughs> so much fun. Thank you. Um, I, I mean, it's just a part of me. I feel like I, I, I always say it's like kind of a, the part of me in high school that I was not really ready to explore. Um, and I think I just love that he goes for what he wants and he gets sharp pay. That's such a fun thing. I can't really talk too much about season two because no, you can't. Spoiler, it's not released spoiler. yet, no, no, right, 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 right. <laughs> but just, I mean, it's just fun going back to like, the high stakes of high school musical theater honestly because it really is you know i mean you know from mt production it's like this is the biggest thing happening this in my life right now moment of my life <laughs> this is the most yes. important thing ever yeah. and that's what that's what the show is to these yeah. students on the show at, at this time in their life they're like 
we have to do amazing work and it has to be an amazing show and you know it's high school musical you want to do it justice well and i think too what it really does show is teamwork and what happens when you do come together as a unit and the magic that can definitely result from that yes 100 percent. it's so much fun to watch mm-hmm. it's so much fun how it's a blast. are your parents and family reacting to this? <laughs> I am sure they are the most proud. Oh yeah, okay. they love it. <laughs> uh, my my siblings are more fun than my parents, I have to say. <laughs> I mean, my parents are fun, <laughs> but my parents have always been like, yeah, you're great, but you know, it, it's it's chill. They always have really instilled staying grounded and yes, not cocky at all. Stay humble. Check your it ego is at the door. Hundred percent. Yeah. Put your dish in the dishwasher. Oh yeah. <laughs> but You're they still but Joey, they, Joe. <laughs> absolutely. And um, but they do love the show. They love it. And they they can't wait for season two. And they all, you know, they get all the updates. Like we have a family group message since we're all spread out now across the country. Yeah. Um, we all I'll send pictures or little things from set and everyone gets excited. Um, But yeah, my siblings are like super fans of the show. They all love it so much. It's a blast. I mean, I'm so proud of you and you have this extended contract now and shifting over to season two. I mean, such great things are happening and so much more to come. Certainly. How, um, how has your family really, really grounded you and anchored, uh, I guess just everything. I know your family and I know how important they are. The love that you have for one another, the unconditional Mm -hmm. love. How did that help you through this journey from being a young actor all the way through your years at the Academy, you know, high school and then deciding you're doing this and then you land, you know, just a small TV series. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That was sarcasm. No, I know. (laughs) And I mean, you know, how, how has your family really helped you uh, process and, and get you through some of those, I'm sure it's been emotional ride and emotional ride. Yeah. Um, I think it's always just like never focusing too much on yourself, which I think can be almost uh, detrimental at times, but <laughs> We're, you know, paying attention to everyone in the room and how everyone's story is is just as important as whatever you're going through. And you never know what is on someone else's plate, that type of thing. Um, I think that has really kept me grounded throughout everything is just, you know, everyone has something going on and you have no idea. Um, so, you know, be kind, (laughs) just kindness and generous with your energy and time. Um, I feel like that has always helped me stay a good person. Well, and I don't, again, what I said in the beginning, you do have a heart of gold. You're just, uh, thank you. Oh, and it it goes back to your family too. And and I, your parents, I think I miss seeing them. It's I know, I know. Also, I think being the youngest, I was able to witness everything that happened through my older siblings and kind of learn from that and you know we all had to take care of each other growing up so that also I feel like instilled that sense of caring about others and what they're going through you know yeah and reading the room if you look back you know I I'm sure that you've taken this time especially during COVID and everything going on to kind of reflect what do you have totally. any advice for our listeners and, and any kind of words of encouragement to help them know that it's okay, that they can chase their dreams too? Lots of dream yes. chasers out there. Oh, hundred percent. Um, I mean, the biggest one I think that I've come to realizing in the pandemic is believing in yourself. Um, I think a lot of the things that have happened to me, I, I, have viewed as like, ah, I just got lucky. And this just happened to me because I was in the right place at the right time. But also having that in your mind that, you know, actually I did work really hard to get where I am and I need to believe that I do belong here. And I get rid of that whole self-doubt and imposter syndrome that 
I can tend to have. <laughs> um, so believing in yourself is a huge thing. I think just believing that if you put in the work, if you prepare the best you can and you do your homework, you can do whatever you set your mind to truly. Um, and second thing, and this is something I got at Michigan is to, you cannot move forward if you're looking sideways. And that's about worrying about what other people are doing and comparing your path to theirs, which is just su such a bad idea um, <laughs> because everyone's path is different as this whole podcast is about the pathways to perform. You, everyone has a different journey and it is not, no one is going to be identical to the other. So to worry about, oh, well, this person's doing this thing and maybe I'm not doing enough or I'm not, you know, bleh, whatever. Worry about yourself, what you're going to do, what you're going to excel in and what's going to make you happy and fill you up. Um, I think that's so important and something I still have to remind myself from time to time, for sure. You're, you chasing your dreams and you finding happiness in this newfound success, right? Mm -hmm. it, what it does is lift everyone all of the communities and all the lives you've touched it lifts everyone and allows everyone that they can to like do this they can do this it's possible and it might not be what you thought you know broadway mm -hmm. or whatever it was and here you are but it takes you down you know and through a door through a new door but certainly an exciting journey mm -hmm. for sure that's great thank um, you that's again, very nice it's the truth <laughs> I'm proud of you. I love you, you so much. You are just a beautiful soul, and you know that I love you. So, <laughs> and I love you. Thank you. I uh, would love to keep in touch. Certainly, uh, of I wish you all the best. We will be following you, and I'm sure that many people will be watching. And you know, I, I'm I'm so excited to see what happens next for you because this is just the beginning of Thank some you. great things to come. Keep going. Thank you so much. I appreciate I'm that. So proud. So proud. <laughs> Anything else that you want to leave us with? I don't think so. This was so much fun. <laughs> well, we'll definitely do it again. Because I'm sure that I'm going to have to call and ask questions about season two because I love it. <laughs> ah, <laughs> so great. There's so definitely great. some fun stuff in store for Seb in season two, I have to say. How fun. When yeah. does season two, uh, do we know the air date? The we world do premiere not. Date? Okay. Yeah, no. and, and who knows with COVID and delays and all the things. Sure. Oh, yeah. Sure. We'll, definitely, <laughs> we'll definitely keep our eyes open. And, you know, for our listeners, where can they find you? So tell me about your social media. Where can they find you? Oh, yes. yeah. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Um, Facebook, uh, I have a page, Joe Serafini. Um, you can like uh, Twitter. You can follow me at, at Joe underscore Serafini underscore. And it's the same at for Instagram. Great. So we'll make sure that we <laughs> share that with our listeners. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Joe, take care of yourself. Best thank wishes. You. It's <laughs> so exciting. And for everyone out there, just remember, believe, believe in yourself. You can do it and you can achieve it. Thanks everybody. Thank you.